Well, hello, this is Adam. Welcome to Rare Classic Cars. Today, I got my 75 Oldsmobile Delta 88 Royale out. This car has 4,500 original miles on it. And it's got some really cool options. It does not have air conditioning. I bought this car in Northern Wisconsin, where at least back then it didn't get hot most of the year. But it does have the 455. Notice the rocket nomenclature was gone from the 455 this year. I guess because Oldsmobile thought that the 190 horsepower 455 just wasn't quite what it used to be. But still very pleasant engine. Does have the firm ride and handling package as well. The F41 suspension, which consists of larger stabilizer bar up front, firmer coil springs, as well as shocks. Does have power windows. Tilt wheel. AM radio with power antenna. A wonderful key buzzer. So here you can turn, it says local and distant. So if you turn the radio on, watch the antenna. That's how far it goes up for local. Then if you switch this to distance, then it extends the remainder of the way. And when you turn the radio off, it simply retracts. But you can see here, this car, like I said, 4,501 miles. Bought it last year. I've had to do some work to it for those who've been following my channel. I did put a new radiator in. Or record the old radiator. If you're in Michigan, visit uh, Mel at Ferndale Radiator in Ferndale, Michigan. Does a great job, tell him Adam sent you. Had to have a new fuel tank put in because I always put these little plastic filters on at least for the first bit to see what the fuel looks like coming from the tank. And now that I have a new fuel tank, this is what the filter looks like. Very clean, no issues. Here's what the filter looked like that I just took off not that long ago. And this has probably 20 miles on it, 30 miles on it. Yeah, that's all rust particles. I was getting a fuel starvation issue on the car, as you can imagine, is the filter plug. But new tank has solved that. Rebuilt the carburetor, new master cylinder, which I've painted the base black so it doesn't look all rusty after a few months and looks closer to the original. As soon as the original plugs, wires, I've changed the antifreeze, oil. Just a neat car overall. Runs sweet too. I did change the distributor cap and rotor. No declutching fan notice on the non-AC model. Just a standard four blade fan. I wakened this car from its long slumber last year. It didn't run very well. Now it runs great. It's very quiet too. Single exhaust. All the original exhaust still on it. What a wide car. And my friend John Manugian, who 
was responsible for the second gen CTS, sedan, coupe, wagon, the late 90s Pontiac Grand Prix, among a lot of other cars. Well, I would call John a friend. He would call me an acquaintance, probably, which is true of most of my design friends. They don't want to associate with the finance guy. But every once in a while, they take pity upon me. He gave me this book, the Oldsmobile Color and Trim book from 1975. And you can see here, this is the Delta 88 Royale interior fabric. And here's the fabric swatch. So black Lombardi cloth with its velour. Very rich. These seats, Oldsmobile did great seats. I don't know who was their seat engineer during this period of time, but my gosh, their bench seats, their split bench seats, their bucket seats were all superb. And I also had to have a new heater core put in this car. So stay tuned for more on that. I elected not to do this myself. It's not a fun job. And if you need a place to do things, if you're in Southeastern Michigan, Masterworks Automotive in Madison Heights, does a lot of my work so check them out they're a world-class corvette restoration shop but they also service classic vehicles like this thankfully and do a great job call brian uh, at masterworks if you need any work done and this is one of the last hard tops even though this is a colonnade roof style with the big pillar here the later Chevrolets is an example, or the Cadillacs, there wasn't this second window here, but you can see this is actually a hard top. You can also see this was during the period where Ford was advertising, the closer you look, the better we look. That was not true with the GM vehicles. I mean, look at this door gap. I can stick my whole pinky through here on this side. It is just awful. And yes, this is how they were built. If anybody on the channel says this is not how they were built, they haven't owned one of these cars. This is exactly how they were built in the day. You can even see like this molding is kind of yellowing a bit. It's plastic, interestingly, except for this piece. This car was obviously always garage. The package shelf, the back of the seat is perfect. The paint is perfect, all original paint. I wouldn't say the trunk gap is all that great either, though it's pretty uniform, it's just as big. This is cool, I like the little fuel filler door on the bumper filler, you lift that up, and that's where you put in your fuel. And I open and close this very gently because these bumper fillers are old. As you can see, it also has the wire wheels. wire wheel covers, I should say. And it has the continuously operating flow-through ventilation fan. If you've been watching some of my videos, this car does not have the flow-through ventilation vents that they had in 71 on the trunk. It moved to the lock pillar in 72, and it was there on some of the Astro ventilation cars, even two before that. But you can hear the fan running if you're quiet. And I'll put it on off now. And the fan still runs, in spite of it being an off. What a cool car, though. In spite of General Motors' quality challenges from this time period, Oldsmobile, I really like the theme of this dashboard with the center barrel vent here because this is a no-AC car. There's no vents on the outer edge there or over here. But the seats are very comfortable. The clock even still works. Just a cool old car. Neat horn too. Somebody will get out of your way quickly. And I love the center vent pull to activate this. Each side has the knee coolers that you can activate by pulling these levers. And Oldsmobile certainly had the best gas pedal. Buick's was good too, but I think Olds's was even a little bit bigger than Buick's during the time. Makes it look very authoritative, in spite of the engine having 190 horsepower at this time. So I thought I'd just give you a little update on this car. 
Also has the reading lights integrated into the dome light. Stay tuned for some more and some comparison tests on it and future discussion. And take a look at this trunk. That's not a big trunk. I don't know what is. Certainly can fit lots of bodies in there. Plenty good room. Oh, here we go on a little drive. Car's very, very quiet inside. Barely hear the engine. Hear some tire squeal though. The 455 was neutered by this year, as I mentioned, but it still has enough torque to chirp the tires by far. It just doesn't have a lot of power. Once you get above 40 miles an hour, it almost feels like it's a two barrel carburetor. And unfortunately, the emission standards kind of took their toll on the vehicles during this time. But it still gives you a really sublime experience. These seats are ridiculously comfortable. This might be actually the best bench seat that I've ever sat in in a 70s era car. It certainly doesn't have any lateral support, but you don't need it with the velour. You're not going anywhere. You're stuck to the seat. And it doesn't have hit any of the wrong pressure points or anything like some of the other car seats of the era do. And this cabin is extremely hushed from wind noise, road noise. You don't hear any, I mean, I'm going almost 50 miles an hour and really don't hear anything and it's a windy day today just a pleasant experience so if you're looking for an old classic these mid 70s cars 75 is probably the worst year for drivability but sure can't it's tough to beat for the price you can get these classics for not much money something with 4500 miles like this is going to cost you a bit more but you can find one with 30,000 miles, 40,000 miles, not pay much money, and enjoy yourself. Drive something different. Have fun. This car gets a ton of looks everywhere. It's rare because it's all black and it has no vinyl roof. And it has the 455, as I mentioned, and the F41 ride and handling package. So it's a pretty rare bird. Very pleasant car to drive, especially on long trips. Transmission shifts perfectly, so smooth. You, know, you get in a modern car with an eight to 10 speed and all you hear is the engine going and it's so annoying. This car has so much torque and so few gears in the transmission that <laughs> it's it's really a uh, retrograde step when you get into a modern car in terms of the response and the overall shift feel. In any case, hope you enjoyed this brief drive of the 75 Olds 88. Thanks for watching this video on the 1975 Oldsmobile 88 Royale. If you enjoyed it, please like and comment as that helps the YouTube algorithm serve it up to more viewers like you. And check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions of videos for you to watch. If you're not yet subscribed, click the circular icon at the top left of the 67 Buick Riviera. Till next time, thanks again for watching and take care.